Okay, back in the town. And, um... I already took the liberty of checking uh, how much uh, monoliths we had out of the uh, 16, and we actually have 13. So we only missed three, so that's pretty good. Uh, the reward you get for it is actually really good, too. I guess I'll just spoil it, but you're, you get a brown cloak, I believe, which is the same as the researcher, uh, who is, like, looking at all the monoliths, and it actually increases your HP by one, which is really good, because, you know, one HP is a big difference, honestly, when you only have five. Anyway, with, uh, with uh, all four pillars activated, uh, all the bosses of each of the uh, four areas conquered, it's finally time to descend into the core. We got our little pink drifter buddy with us. Blue cloak, sna snazzy blue and white cloak. And we're going to bring them straight to the depths of hell. Okay. Welcome to the core. Yeah, the, uh, the darkest depths of, uh, whatever this world, uh... Whatever this world is, is a pretty, pretty foreboding place, and uh, I think, I think we all know what's lying at the very bottom of it, if we can even make it to the bottom of these stairs without collapsing. Um, it's been fun, but, you know, all good things, or all bad things, I guess, in this case, must come to an end. I like those flashes in the background, that's really cool. Okay. Let's do this. Come on, buddy, you can make it. <laughs> Five med kits. <laughs> yeah, you you know what's coming. Okay. The core. And to defend it. Judgment. Okay, final boss, Judgment. Uh, what a fucking name for a final boss, holy crap. And yeah, this boss is uh, very formidable. He has probably the most uh, over-the-top move in the whole game, which is that giant laser attack. He also has it, uh, uh, I think, I'm pretty sure his health bar is uh, way bigger than the other bosses. And uh, he also has a large variety of attacks that you need to worry about. Yeah, including this one right here, which is very, very irritating. Uh, basically, the best way to deal with that attack, from what I remember, is to uh, kind of use your, your charge attack to slowly uh, whittle those down. This charge attack is very annoying as well. Gotta be careful. Okay. Heal again. Oh, shit. There we go. Yeah, so these, they're basically, these mines will uh, explode. And uh, yeah, if they're all active uh, at the end, it's very, very bad. And holy crap, we actually did it. First fucking try. Holy crap, my heart is pounding fast. That, that boss is, is nothing to mess around with, Jesus Christ. Okay, let's get the hell out of here. And don't even try dashing, because you'll just end up coughing. Don't even try healing, because you'll just end up coughing. All we can do is run. All we can do is just drift to the exit. Oh, look at that trail of blood. That's not good. 
Come on, you're almost there. Oh, go on. <sighs> we made it. We saved the world. Here's your reward. And that's the game. So yeah, the game definitely doesn't beat around the bush when it gets to the, when it gets to the end. You you unlock the four pillars, you just go kill the final boss, and that's it. It doesn't uh, it doesn't uh, take its time. And uh, man, I don't know. Something about that ending gets to me. It's, I don't know. I, I just really like that ending. It's it's very minimal. Um, one really cool thing, by the way, is that... Uh, yeah, that statue that he leans against and dies, basically, is... Um, I could be wrong, but I believe it's the same statue he's leaning up against at the end of the, the Kickstarter trailer for this game, back when this game was Kickstarted. Um, so that's just a cool little thing of like oh yeah like he's just this is the end right there um also the uh soundtrack of this game is very understated for a lot of it uh mainly it's just ambient synth but i don't know that that final track as well um panacea i believe is the name of it just uh Oh, it's just, I don't know, it gets to me. I really like that ending. Again, it's very minimal in the fact that, like, you obviously don't get any text or anything, but holy crap, Hyperlight Drifter. I don't know. I, this this game is just really good. I really like this game. <laughs> um, what, 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 I've, I've been singing its praises for a while, but just, I don't know, the combat is so quick and, uh, precise and uh you feel like a, a badass no matter what you're doing whether it's like long range combat or close range or like and uh, again a lot of the game is understated like even the upgrades you get aren't crazy or they aren't like game changers or anything but i don't know they just it's it's just cool um it, it, the game is cool the game is fun, <laughs> is the best way I can describe it as well. This game is just a whole lot of fun. Um, e even now, this is this is my fourth playthrough of the game, I believe, and I just I, I never get tired of, of going through these areas, exploring every little nook and cranny because there's so much, and there's like every single time there's going to be something that it's like, oh wow, I totally missed that on the first go, because uh, there's so many just there's so much stuff packed in those those three environments. Uh, are, are so well well built again again i'd say the the fourth area the barren hills is a little bit of a letdown as far as final areas is, are concerned but the lake mountain and forest are so uh rich in just uh, the the level design and the uh the amount of stuff um crammed into those locations um Music is incredible, as I mentioned before. This, uh, I'd, I'd say, is probably one of my favorite indie game soundtracks, honestly. Again, which is great, because 
when you say like, oh yeah, like hum a Hyperlight Drifter song, you, you can't. Um, there isn't really any hummable songs. Um, it's just it this the just the foreboding like sense of like the what the soundtrack brings uh, really I don't know it resonates well, especially w com combined with the gameplay and stuff. And I'm probably sounding like a complete rambling idiot right now, but uh, <laughs> the switch the switch. Uh, <laughs> just went dark because I wasn't touching the controller. Anyway, um, as far as uh, complaints are concerned, uh, the pretty much the only complaint, only nitpicks I have is that uh, some of the stuff can be a little cryptic, maybe not for uh, its 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 best. Um, like some of the stuff about like, it doesn't tell you about like gear stuff and um, little things like that where you can't, the internet just kind of had to figure it out. Um, and also, uh, I think it would have been cool if the core had been expanded into a full area. And that might have something to do with the fact that this was a Kickstarter game. And, uh, it was a successful Kickstarter. It reached a lot of stretch goals. Um, but, uh, the game was, uh, delayed quite a bit. Like, it was, it took, like, an extra, uh, year and a half, I think, to actually release. And, uh, and, uh. Again, something I should mention, by the way, is that a huge inspiration of this game, I, I could be getting some of these details wrong, I apologize, but uh, a lot of the uh, inspiration for this game from Heart Machine, uh, the developer, um, came from the fact that the, the head guy, um, Alex, I believe his name is, uh, has a terminal illness, I'm pretty sure, with his heart. Um, so he's had to, like experienced that for a large portion of his life so like obviously there's a lot of like imagery in this game of like bleeding hearts and like a, a bleeding like broken core and i think that's like mainly where a lot of the inspiration comes from um so it was uh a, like developing the game in the first place was a big struggle but i think it really paid off because uh this is definitely one of my absolute favorites i think this game is a fantastic uh romp it's it's a short a short game yes but it has a ton of replayability as well as uh lots of uh, uh lots of extra modes and stuff like hard mode and stuff and again if you're going for 100 percent, there's so much to collect like I, i'm not sure what our actual percentage was but uh i'd say we we did pretty good though anyway uh Again, I, I sound like a rambling moron, I apologize. I really should space out, or actually uh, think about these thoughts before we get to the end, but uh, oh well. And that's it. And you even get a, a new title screen, too, for uh, finishing the game. Notice how it's, uh, it's the unlocked core now instead of the uh, closed core of the original. Uh, title screen so that's really cool so yeah that is hyperlight drifter holy crap this game is great um i i couldn't i can't recommend it enough honestly um just so so good um pick it up today it's on you can get it on ps4 you can get it on steam you can get it on uh, switch uh if i was going to recommend a version i would definitely recommend uh Probably the Switch version, just because of its uh, new content. But the PC version is, is also very good as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I can tell you right now, this won't be the last time I play the game. Honestly, as soon as I shut off this recorder, I'm probably going to keep playing. Because <laughs> I just... I don't know. This one, it really it really resonates with me. I don't know. It's, it's, it's cool. The game is fun. <laughs> to quote the president of Nintendo, the game is fun. <sighs> so with that... Uh... Yeah, this has been Toronto 4590. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I know I've been covering a lot of indies recently on the channel, but again, indie games, they're just knocking it out of the park recently, and uh, this one is no different, even even after, two years after its release. So uh, I, hope, uh, I hope you pick it up and enjoy it as much as I have. And with that, this has been Toronto 4590, and I will see you guys next time.